Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Good afternoon. I'm Ethan Allen, filling in for Howard Rigg here on Code Green on Think Tech Hawaii. We're talking about uh, architecture today, and I have Phil Camp, uh, principal at Hi Hierarchy, Hierarchy, Hierarchy LLP, uh, about a ten-year-old architectural firm here that, that does very high-end, lead-certified, uh, lead-platinum. Uh, Construction projects. Yes, a lot so, of sustainable projects. Welcome. Uh, good, good to have you here, Phil. Thank you. Thank you so much. Maybe to start out with just a quick, what is this LEED business, this, so in case our viewers don't know? Well, LEED is a certification program for okay. sustainable projects. Uh, it's probably the most recognized internationally from mm -hmm. a sustainable certification process for uh, new design and construction. Uh, they also get into retrofit efforts as well. but. Uh, from a certification process, it's probably the most widely recognized. So what it effectively does is it registers and recognizes the projects in different levels of sustainability. So mm -hmm. the, the upper enchelon is the platinum and mm -hmm. steps down to gold, silver, and then there's just a baseline certification level. So depending on how sustainable the project is, uh, it'll meet out a different level of certification. Right, so that has to do with were the materials sort of sourced ecologically? Are they you know, maybe being reused, recycled? Are there, is it their energy efficient it building? It effectively right. runs a gamut. Right. So it'll go from everything from site sustainability, uh, how you manage water on site, what kind of uh, infrastructure you have, um, how you deal with the grading, even where the site is, is it in the center of a, uh, urban infill site or is it out in the middle of a suburban site, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then it gets into the building, the materiality, where the products come from, big issue in Hawaii, right? Because right. we're a small little rock in the middle of the Pacific, so most things have to come come mm -hmm. here. So uh, you get credits for um, products that are locally sourced. Uh, you don't have that extensive carbon footprint from shipping sure. things in and out uh, from the state. Uh, and then gets into energy use as the building is turned over and it's operating the life cycle of the project, typically that's one of the most uh, intensive uses of energy, not just during the construction, but also as the building's occupied, right? Mm -hmm. So what kind of HVAC, what kind of lighting you use, uh, deals with all of those things. But yeah, it, gets, it really gets into everything. Uh, Excellent. From, of the so project. you want to get these high lead ratings and they suggest that you're building well, you're building sustainably, you're building with yeah. relatively low carbon footprint. Uh, and you've got a uh, building that's going to sort of continue to pay back in, in that sense over time. That That's absolutely it. So the certification process uh, keeps track of the building process, the design process as well as the building process as you move through the life of a structure from designing it to building it. Uh, but it also tracks all the materiality that you're using and even how that materiality is being installed on the project, mm -hmm. right? So. Uh, will require window tests when you put a window in. So it's great if you have a good window, but if it's leaking, that's not very sustainable, right? right. Um, uh, it'll test the HVAC in the system, so as your ducts move through a space, uh, if they're leaking and, and uh, you're losing energy, you know, it could be a great duct system and a great uh, air conditioning system, but if it's leaking like a sieve, it does nobody any good. Right. So uh, not just the products, but how they're installed, right. and making sure they're tested, and making sure they're performing Excellent. as they should. Excellent. And your, your firm has done several uh, platinum level projects and in including some that are for affordable housing, which is pretty remarkable. Yeah, no, we're, we're very proud of it. Uh, we brought two first to the state, uh, and then we'll, we'll talk about them a little later. Um, one we just wrapped up, KO Lane, so it's the first in the state that's a, a lead platinum project for uh, affordable housing that's also a mid rise, so a higher density kind of product. Wow. And then the Kolapua project we'll talk about uh, briefly as well, that's on uh, Kauai, and that was the first in the state to be lead platinum for affordable multifamily housing. So there's been a few projects since then that hit the platinum level, but uh, we're proud of it because we, we hope it breaks the misnomer that good affordable housing cannot be provided uh, in a sustainable manner. So these, both of those projects uh, reach platinum certification was the highest level of sustainability and their affordable housing project, which we sorely need here. Yeah, in uh, absolutely, and it's, it's critical to, to try to advance on all those fronts simultaneously, right? Have have more more afford, affordable housing, but also be sure that it's appropriate housing, right? And yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, we, we try to fight that right. constantly. Mm -hmm. it's, it, affordable housing should not mean 
bad housing or cheap housing. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do really good uh, housing or office or any kind of uh, construction, but you can do it sustainably. And, and mm -hmm. in Hawaii, we have to be doing yeah, that. Yeah. Well, do you want to uh, uh, pop in and start talking a little bit about sure. what it is? Yeah, we can, we can jump right into Keoho. Um, okay. If uh, I think that, that intro slide just kind of shows the three projects we'll be talking about. So on the left, uh, Keho Lane, in the middle, Kolapua uh, in Princeville on Kauai, uh, and on the far right, that's a local project and a historical project right down the street here in uh, the Dillingham Transportation Building. That's uh, the offices for Haole Malo, also a lead platinum project. Excellent, excellent. So uh, very different kinds of, of work for very different sort of audiences and different uses, but, but you, you managed to, on all of them, put this high sustainability, high energy efficiency on into them. Yeah, and I, I think in every instance it was really uh, critical to have team partners that mm -hmm. bought into that, namely the clients that mm -hmm. really felt that was an important part, so they helped shepherd the process through, uh, and then good contractors and an entire team, so it's not just hierarchy. I mean, uh, we're very proud of the projects, but it's a full team process, and we bring some of the best team members to the table when we're doing these projects, so. Sure, it, certainly your, your clients have to be interested in this process to, to Absolutely. pursue it, right? Um, <laughs> you know, it, it, again, it's a bit of a misnomer that Sustainability or a high level of sustainability is unattainable. It's too expensive. It can't be done. Um, while there are uh, extra efforts in every project, um, it can be done. And it really comes down to the client that buys in. Uh, that makes all the difference in the world. Um, you know, if there's additional effort, they'll help shepherd that through. Uh, but it's really buy-in that makes it happen. Right, right. Everyone's got to really be committed to that process and realize that the real almost unmeasurable value of doing a, a good, sustainable, energy efficient project, right? Yeah. It, the I values mean, go almost beyond simply money. Uh, and, and, and it's the, the, the sharp clients that really understand it because it's not just the day one cost. Mm -hmm. The sharp clients understand they're going to be carrying costs for the project in perpetuity, right? Mm -hmm. So if, they're own, if they own a structure and they're going to manage it and operate it, for 20, 30, 100 years, uh, which is what we really should be looking at. Uh, having an efficient building that's built well is going to pay for itself much faster than the one that was just done cheaply the yeah. first, first, you know, first five years, you're going to be replacing things all over the place. Exactly, exactly. So should we move on? Sure, yeah, we can, we can talk about the Keho project. So um, the, the, the first slide here is kind of the, the front shot, a really interesting project in that it was a joint development agreement. So in the back of that shot on the left side, you'll see um, our project is in the front, 209 units of affordable housing over about 31,000, 32,000 square feet of retail behind that project is a for sale product. It's a tower that Stanford Cars team did behind it, Keho Place. Um, but it's unique in that our project and their project work together collaboratively to develop the entire block. Oh. And eventually the transit will land right in front of our project. So oh, you'll have transit connectivity moving in. Uh, but this picture, and I think if you move to the next slide as well, both of those pictures show some of the highlights on our project in that it was all locally sourced and it was a precast uh, concrete construction. So you see some of those fins jutting out and some of those uh, feature items that come out. Those are actually all precast. So they're panelized concrete built here on the island. Um, and then they became additional elements of the project, not just from an aesthetic, but they help shade the project. Mm -hmm. So you're reducing heat gain on the windows, which reduces the cooling requirements inside the unit. So it's a, you know, it's kind of looking at the whole package. Yeah, um, it's, it seems like this is a lot of very systems thinking, right? You're really considering all these things from the, the surface transit, yeah. transportation. Absolutely. To, to the shade on the, on the windows, and yeah. And that's something as architects, I mean, you know, we always beat our own drum, but I think realistically, you have to look at it as the entire system. If you're just looking at a specific element and saying, hey, I'm gonna get really efficient air conditioning in here, well, that's great, and we love efficient air conditioning, but you know, if your windows are letting all that heat come in and you don't have shading, that really efficient air conditioning is gonna be cranked up you know, exactly. to high speed. So you gotta look at the whole thing collectively, and that's what architects uh, should be doing, and we, we try and shepherd a, a good team, bring them together, and then we try and look at it holistically, because if you're just looking at one element, it, yeah. it, it's not gonna solve, it, solve the riddle. It's too easy to miss other things, the, the wind flow, the, the general direction of the airflow. Everything. The sun, sunlight, as you said, the surrounding vegetation, how all that plays together. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, we could jump to the next one. So I think what you're seeing here is a little uh, sample of the interior of the unit. So this project, again, was affordable housing, so we had micro units on there, some small units, um, but small and very efficient. I think the key for small, efficient units 
uh, are, are appointing them well, uh, giving the amenities to the tenants that hey, your, your actual living space might be smaller, but you have good amenities on site that you can take advantage of. Um, so if you can get them um, well appointed and, and make it fit, you can still live well in a smaller space. What that does from the construction perspective and ownership perspective is it brings a huge economy of scale. So you can build more units, uh, reduce the uh, construction costs. So again, rather than reducing the constru construction costs just by making it cheaper, mm -hmm. uh, the theory being we'll improve the economy of scale, uh, we'll, we'll try and build in some redundancy so we can drop those construction costs, but still deliver a really high level product, um, mm -hmm. whether it's affordable or not. Yeah, excellent, excellent, no, that, that's very important. Uh, so another, uh, some, some interiors and just some fun stuff in this one. Uh, the, the slide on the right is actually a portion of the entry lobby. Uh, if you go there today on that wall, uh, 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 a fun side note is you'll have that lead platinum plaque on that wall. Oh, so. excellent, excellent, there we go. <laughs> uh, but no, it, it's, a, it's a, the entry lobby and you'll see some little features in there. That ceiling in there is all uh, reused and reclaimed wood. We got that from Reuse Hawaii. Excellent. Um, and it became a feature of the lobby. Um, and then we, we tied that into kind of help uh, display the the, you know, the feel of the entire project. So the first thing you experience, you're already engaging with some reused and recycled products right when you walk in the front door. Uh, the image on the left, um, that's a community amenity. Uh, it's a meeting room for all of the, um, the tenants to use. Mm -hmm. They can reserve it. It's their own little space on the wall that you can't see in that image. There's a large TV screen, so you can either have meetings in that room or you could have oh. viewing parties. Or you know, then there's an adjacent space that has a, a smaller kitchen and opens mm -hmm. up to Illini. So again, their, their spaces are compact and efficient, but they have great amenities throughout the space right. to so make it. Yeah, you know, it's important work. if you want to have a place where you can then bring people in. You, you want some larger space that you can use. But yeah. you don't need it very often, right? So. And sustainability right. is not right. just about the product, not just about the construction, it's about how people live, right? Exactly. So it's it's great if you have this high, high, highly efficient uh, space, but if people don't want to be there, that, that, that's not very right. sustainable, right? Exactly, so, exactly. Uh, you gotta make it, uh, you gotta design it so that it's, it's the space that people want to be and congregate right. and live. Exactly. And some some of the key aspects, I guess, of, that, that you. Yes, yeah, so, so I probably don't want to dig too deep into the lead weeds here. Uh, <laughs> pardon the, the pun, but the uh, these are some of the, the lead specific credits that we pursued. So we share them because they're important. Uh, to the overall composition of the project. So on the left, it's access to open space and amenities. So it's a credit, sure, you check a box from the lead perspective, but it's important to the project in that all the tenants living there will be able to engage with uh, mass transit eventually. Mm -hmm. So when the mass transit stop, right at the edge of our site, and you can see in that uh, site plan in the middle slide there on this image, uh, you'll see the future transit stop is literally right at the end. So uh, all those riders will be able to dump right out into mm -hmm. our promenade space and vice versa, all of our tenants will be able to jump on the mass transit and uh, move either way. Yeah. Um, but it helps to create um, opportunities for alternative transportation, which is another credit we pursued. So uh, the adjacency to the uh, transit and, and our owners and our project uh, went the extra step. So one of the prime retail spaces at grade in this space is turned over to the, to the tenants for them to store their bicycles and work on it. So rather than that being grade A uh, retail space, uh, they turn that over to their own tenant. So it's, you know, really speaks directly to how important it is to the landowner uh, and our development partners, Girding Edlin, um, that people are allowed alternative transportation. So they really buy into the multimodal transportation. They give them a bike facility where they can work on their bikes, store their bikes, all that stuff. So yeah, no, that's beautiful. It really encourages people. It makes having a bicycle when you've got a small apartment feasible. Yeah. yeah otherwise, yeah, it may not you're be. You're not it's trying to you know, hang it on the wall well, in, your, in your smaller <coughs> unit. And you got right. a great place. It's right downstairs. You yeah. can jump on it. You can work on it down there if you need to. Yeah. And then you jump on your bike, and you're just minutes away from the central business district. Super. Hey, this is, this is great. Uh, we're enjoying this tour here. Uh, uh, Phil Camp uh, from High Archie, LL LLP, and uh, we're on Code Green. I'm your guest host, Ethan Allen, and we'll be back in one minute. Hey, aloha, Stan Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii, where community matters. This is the place to come to think about all things energy. We talk about energy for the grid, energy for vehicles, energy in transportation, energy in maritime, energy in aviation. We have all kinds of things on our show, but we always focus on hydrogen here in Hawaii. 
because it's my favorite thing. That's what I like to do. But we talk about things that make a difference here in Hawaii, things that should be a big changer for Hawaii. Uh, and we hope that you'll join us every Friday at noon on Stand the Energy Man and take a look with us at new technologies and new thoughts on how we can get clean and green in Hawaii. Aloha. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Gabrieli. I'm the host for Young Talents Making Way here on FinTech Hawaii. We talk every Tuesday at 11 a.m. about things that matters to tech, matter to science, to the people of Hawaii with some extraordinary guests. The students of our schools who are participating in science fair. So Young Talents Making Way every Tuesday at 11 a.m. only on FinTech Hawaii. Mahalo. And you're back here on Code Green. I'm Ethan Allen, guest hosting, set, set, setting in for uh, Howard Vig. Uh, with me today is Phil Camp of Hierarchy LLP, uh, architectural firm here, and we've been talking about LLED certification, lead certification, and lead platinum buildings. That, and, and particularly, uh, Phil has made the point in the, the first half that uh, for affordable housing can also actually be extremely good housing. No, uh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and they've, they've, Hierarchy has built several uh, of the first projects in Hawaii that dem demonstrated this. Got LEED Platinum certification, which is the highest level of certification, and our uh, affordable housing for multiple uh, tenants. <coughs> and we were, we were going through some of the uh, sort of the criteria that, that helped lead up to it. And uh, I think the next slide actually shows a couple, one, one of my favorites here, surface water management. Tell, <laughs> say a little bit about that, if you would, please. Uh, it's an interesting uh, credit. So it basically speaks to how we manage water on site. Uh, maybe not the sexiest to, to the average uh, Joe public, but it, it's important in Hawaii specifically, especially in Kaka'ako, where we have a high water table. So uh, it speaks to how we manage and collect the water that comes off of either our roofs or our flat surfaces uh, and percolate. So the issue being, if you otherwise just let it flush into the streets, it'll inundate the street system, and then we have flooding all over, and we just went through a whole lot of rains this past weekend where there was a lot of flooding. So uh, as code change, this project is far above current code because it's a lead platinum project, and this was one of the uh, pursuits we uh, followed through with. But uh, as code changes and catches up to the sustainable building practices, more and more sites will be managing their water on site, so they're not dumping it out into the public way and then yeah. causing flooding. But that's, that's really that's really critical because you've got to, we need to be recharging our aquifers here too. So you need to be taking the water where it falls and helping it get into the ground at that point rather than yeah, shooting it down a channel somewhere out into the lagoon. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And that, yeah. that shows some of the dry wells. So there's dry yeah. wells all throughout the site that allows the water to come down, perk through the site. Um, and most of those storm water will be managed on site before it even hits the city streets. Wonderful, wonderful. And then um, the other item is just uh, some optimized energy performance and, and then this slide oh sorry uh, we can we can go to the next slide this one speaks to the environmentally preferable products and the compact development so I touched on that early the environmentally preferable products this project is unique also that it's a mid-rise product but it's also all precast so usually in the mainland when we're doing our mid-rise products uh, almost all of them would be uh, concrete podium decks and then it'd be stick frame either wood or metal above that mm -hmm. in this project the entire project is precast so uh, one it's hugely hugely more durable, um, but the big benefit for us here in Hawaii is that was all locally sourced and locally fabricated here uh, on island. So from a sourceability perspective, it's all local. Right, means that it didn't have to be made on the mainland, Correct. trucked and uh, shipped. Correct, oh, so if it was this again. steel, pretty right. much all that stuff needs to be, right. uh, if it's cold rolled steel or something, it needs to be shipped to Hawaii, mm -hmm. even if it's uh, fabricated here, all that steel comes into uh, Hawaii, they have a batch plant here mm -hmm. where they're for processing all the concrete and cement to make those precast panels. Wonderful, wonderful. That's great, great to be doing that. Uh, we can, yeah, if you want to jump in. So the, sure. the next project is Kolapo. So again, affordable housing. Uh, this is the first uh, affordable housing multifamily um, lead platinum project in the state. This is in uh, in Princeville. Um, a new, unique project in that it, uh, again, was lead platinum, but unique in that it was also passively cooled. So this was a bit of a pilot project from the lead mm -hmm. certification process because they didn't necessarily recognize passively cooled projects. Most of them have some kind of conditioned element in it. Mm -hmm. uh, so you'll see for an affordable 
Affordable Housing Project, there's quite a few windows. We did that intentionally. Uh, so based on the orientation of the of the building throughout the site, it allows us to take advantage of the local trade. So mm -hmm. you know, we always say the best thing about affordable housing is affordability. Mm -hmm. So you know, how much better to come home after work and be able to crack your windows open and get That's cooled nice. for free rather than having to crank the AC and pay for that. Yeah. Uh, so we took advantage of it and it's been a, a huge success for the um, housing product in uh, Princeville. Excellent, excellent. Setting a good example for others then too. We're trying. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of other great teams out there that, that try to do this as well. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it, it took a little bit of extra effort again because LEED nationally didn't recognize the, the passive uh, cooling strategy, oh. um, but now they are. So, yeah. you know. Uh, for much of the US, yeah. that, that's less of an issue probably. Although Correct. With uh, climate change, it's going to become more of an issue. Yeah. Possibly, but, but certainly we're in a climate yeah. that should be taken advantage yeah, yeah, of that. Absolutely. So absolutely. Uh, we had a good argument to, to justify it and, and uh, we understood the process quite well. So I think we're able to make the good argument and eventually we resulted with a platinum project. Excellent, super. So next slide here, again, this is uh, Kolapua and uh, also might be interesting to you. You see on the site plan on the left, a lot of uh, on-site water retention. So same principle, uh, we had on-site water catchment or retention basins. Uh, this is actually right above Hanalei where you typically would look down and you'd see all the low E fields or the taro fields mm -hmm. down below. So we tried to uh, incorporate some of that right on-site and make those retention basins kind of a dual purpose mm -hmm. effort, so they won, they could be an aesthetic uh, benefit for the project, but also they could generate food, and then most importantly, for the water perspective, it could retain that water and manage mm -hmm. it on site. So you'll see the retention basins on site, and they actually became a landscape feature later on. Excellent. Um, and then the, the image on the right kind of shows also in relation to the site plan, how we tried to integrate the units um, to really have the, um, the tenants engaged with mm -hmm. it, because that's a part of sustainability as well is getting people to plug into each other. It's not, sure. <laughs> you know, you don't just have a unit and have people uh, walk around the exterior. So we really tried to promote that uh, sense of community in the project. And again, that's uh, been a huge success for them. Yeah, again, a real nice example of, of real systems thinking and realizing that it's not just each unit, it's it, it's a community. That really wants yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's what housing is yeah. about. It's it's yeah. uh, getting people together, get them to live right, in the space right. that if they you, want to be. If you be organize able. that space properly, they will tend to inter interact more with one another. They'll, they'll have shared activities, and you can do that in very sort of subtle ways just by and the way you arrange your physical space, right? And the developers like it in the long run because it creates a sense of community, and when you have that sense of community, people take care of their spaces a little better. Right. So and when what? you have a unit flip or unit turnover, <laughs> lo and behold, those lead platinum projects, the units aren't as beaten up because mm -hmm. the people actually care that live there, you know, yeah. where other people, people watch, watch out for one another a little bit more probably. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Excellent, excellent. Uh, next slide. So this is our, our last project uh, the, of the three lead platinum projects that we were going to share with you today. And this is a, uh, another local project in Honolulu. Uh, this is in the Dillingham Transportation Building. So it's the Haole Maloa um, office space. So it's a, a lead platinum project. Uh, it's a full gut rehab retrofit in the Dillingham Transportation Building, which is on the National Historic Register. Uh, so you're, you have very uh, a lot of constraints. You can't you can't change the way the building looks on the outside at exactly. all. Exactly. You probably have limitations on what you can do on the inside, even. Absolutely. So when you're dealing with a, a building, this is another one of those misnomers that you know you can't do a sustainable or lead platinum project in a National Historic Register project because there's just too many hurdles to jump through. So. We took that challenge head on, and you're right, while we can't change the envelope and the historic features of the project, uh, we could work within to really ac accent the existing highlights, and mm -hmm. there are quite a few in this old project. It's a beautiful project with great bones. Mm -hmm. um, we're able to really work with what we had. So in this image, you can kind of see the three slides as kind of the primary entry. Um, and we'll get to a later image, but if you look in this image, you can see we really tried to accentuate that historic ceiling. So if you look at right. that ceiling was from the original construction. Wow. So what we did was we tried to bounce some of the natural light coming in from the exterior and push it up uh -huh. uh, to, the ex to the ceilings that existed. So we didn't do those uh, original ceilings, but we wanted people to see it. So it mm -hmm. uh, became a huge feature of the project, and then we built around that and told our story within. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, that's the... the what you got to do with that kind of situation, right? There you go. So th that's the additional slide I was talking about. Mm -hmm. So that image on the left, um, it shows that internalized light shelf. So again, we, we couldn't change or add windows on the exterior. Right. Um, so what we did is we took what few windows they did have and we tried to redirect that natural light and push it deep, deep into the space and highlight those existing features up in the ceiling. And then a cool story on the right, you'll see that wood panel. I love the looking panel. Um, 
one of the groups that this client supports, so they, they're a sustainable group that support youth education in Hawaii and sustainability in Hawaii. And one of the groups they support uh, in Maui, in Hana, they teach trades to. So this woodworking that you're seeing was done by teenagers and younger. So, I mean, just really talented young yeah. kids out in Hana. We gave them the dimensions, the color tonality that we wanted, and that's what we received. I mean, if you commission that to an artist, yeah, uh, I mean, thousands yeah. Thousands of dollars, so. yeah, so it became a, a huge feature for the space, and it really speaks to the overall space as well. Yeah, yeah. that's great, and it, and it says, you know, you can really incorporate great aesthetic uh, values into the into this, and, and do sort of community good at the same time. So yeah. this is really, it's a win-win. And, win, a, win, and right? a full full cycle story, yeah. all of that wood is reclaimed wood that they found in the forest in yeah. Hana. I mean, just a great story with kids learning trades and just right. cranking out some beautiful art as well. Yeah, excellent. Well, this sounds, uh, sounds very, very exciting here. You know, there's a lot of great stuff going on. And yeah, let's see, here's some more of these, uh, more details yet right, from the same project. So yeah, so uh, again, uh, Haole Maloa, some, some of the details. So we're trying to carry an aesthetic that would pull through the project. So again, mm -hmm. we kept the uh, original ceilings and we want to pull off of that. So any mm -hmm. details that we brought, we want to try and bring in those warm hues of wood, mm -hmm. but also try and keep that linear aesthetic. So uh, we started replicating where we had that interior light shelf. Mm -hmm. you'll, see, you'll see these outriggers flying out. Uh, there's an eco resin that goes on top of that. Uh, it's a three-form product, and it has a, a, a eco resin blend with a sheet fabric inside of the resin that helps refract the light and push it in. So, yeah. really cool recycled material, doing a lot of good work for you. Um, almost all of the wood was either recycled or sustainably sourced. Uh, FSC wood, so uh, really yeah. important to the overall project, and it just really kind of helped wrap the, the entire story together. Excellent. Um, but yeah, I mean, projects we're really proud of, and we just we had a blast with all of them. You have good good reason to be. These, it's really amazing to, to see this body of work here. Uh, these these uh, lead platinum structures where you've done them for uh, affordable housing. You've done them for uh, inside historic buildings. It just just uh, utterly amazing oh, to, to, thank you. to see. Uh, it's great to know this kind of work's happening in Hawaii and, and you're to be congratulated for uh, doing it. Well, we appreciate it. I mean, we just had a grand opening for that Keoho Lane project and the mayor was there uh, uh, celebrating with us and he spoke and when he found out that was the first uh, affordable mid-rise project that hit Lead Platinum. I mean, he's like, we've got to do more of those, and I couldn't agree with him more. I mean, it's Absolutely. we need to be doing more of this, and, and hopefully these are good examples of how it can be achieved. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for being here, Phil. This, this is wonderful. It's great. Hierarchy is doing thank you. Uh, cutting edge work here. That, that's, that it's good for the community. It's good for the state. Yeah, excellent. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate it. And uh, come back next week, and uh, I hope Howard will be, will be back on Code Green.